imagine if you wake up tomorrow and the first thing you hear in the news is that scientists have received a clear, unambiguous signal from extraterrestrial intelligence. That's right, we were just contacted by aliens. How would that make you feel? And what do you think that would mean for all of us here on Earth? Right now, we are living in a period of history where we may be able to answer the question of whether we're alone or whether we have companions in the universe. I loved to ponder these questions when I was a little girl, and I brought these questions into my career today. It started for me when I was studying physics at University of California, Santa Cruz. I was bogged down by equations and homework, wandering the physics building halls, when I saw an ad on the side of the wall that, that said, the first ever astrobiology conference. I thought it sounded so cool that there were scientists out there thinking about life on other worlds. It was so cool to me that I cut class for a week and attended the conference. At this conference, I was attending a lunch where, where I, I know now I met a rare breed of scientists. These scientists were talking about new methods for the search for extraterrestrial intelligence otherwise known as SETI. And it was here that I signed up for the SETI mission. Now, to get to why I'm here today, I need to take us all the way back to the beginning of the universe. To do this, I'm gonna show you my most favorite image ever taken by humanity. And I mean, ever. It was taken by the Hubble Space Telescope on a tiny patch of the sky. If you extended your arm out, you held a pencil, it's the tip of that pencil on the area of the sky. Hubble focused on that tiny patch of sky for 50 straight days, allowing all that light from the distant universe to come in. Every smudge you see here is another galaxy. We know that there are 100 billion observable galaxies in our universe. And galaxies are made up of hundreds of billions of stars. This is a photograph of a nearby galaxy that's similar to our own Milky Way. If you take 100 billion galaxies and you multiply that by 100 billion stars, you get a whole lot of stars. Okay. In fact, you get 10 to the 22 stars. One with 22 zeros at the end of it. And our sun is just one of those 10 to the 22. This photograph here is taken by the Cassini spacecraft, sitting right underneath Saturn's rings. That speck you see in the distance is Earth. We're all existing right now on this little speck, hurtling through space together. 25 years ago, we only knew of one solar system in the universe, and that was our own. Through remarkable strides with technology, astronomers now know that there are thousands of other solar systems nearby to our sun. Three years ago, we now know statistically one out of five stars in our Milky Way has an Earth-sized planet. That's 20% of those hundreds of billions of stars has a planet that's similar in size to Earth. Now it's just left to our imaginations to wonder if there's other life on those Earths. Are there oceans full of jellyfish? Does that primitive life evolve into intelligent life? And does that intelligent life advance into a civilization? And if there was a civilization existing with us today, would they be communicating with us? Now to think about communication over large interstellar distances, we need to think about communication here on Earth. Now, we've done this by using mail. We've draped 
our globe with telephone lines, and we've used light, like radio wavelengths. And many of us now can hold cellular devices and communicate easily worldwide. Now, light is a fantastic message carrier. It travels at the fastest speed limit of the universe. Your message will get there quickest. But if you're trying to receive that signal, you need to know what frequency and what energy they're sending their message. Is it radio wavelengths? Is it visible or optical light like we see with our eyes? Or is it high energy light like x-rays and gamma rays? Now it's no surprise the first SETI search started where our technology was the maturest. We started in 1959. Frank Drake used the Green Bank Telescope in West Virginia and pointed at two nearby stars to listen for any radio communication that may be emanating from another civilization. That same year, the laser was invented. Immediately after its invention, scientists realized that this would be a remarkable way to communicate over interstellar distances. Why? Lasers are powerful. If I beam that signal to you, whoever is at that end of that laser has a bright signal. And you can pack a ton of information into that signal as well. Now this brings me back to that lunchtime conversation when I was in university. Those scientists were talking about new methods for detecting optical laser signals. When I signed up, I got involved with building an optical SETI instrument. We put this instrument on a telescope. We looked at thousands of nearby stars over several years, and we continued on. But there was something that bothered us at the time, and it had to do with the selection of optical wavelengths. If you look at the Milky Way disk, you notice that it looks blotchy. That's because there's gas and dust between the stars. Optical light that's traversing through the galaxy gets absorbed. So your signal would be diminished. But if you go to longer wavelengths, into the infrared wavelengths, all of those infrared light gets just to cruise on through, being uninhibited by that gas and dust. We didn't have the technology back then to build an infrared SETI search, but we do today. Three years ago, we built the first ever near-infrared SETI experiment. We took this instrument, we put it on a telescope, we currently are observing with this telescope about a dozen nights per month, we're even observing tonight, and we're looking again at thousands of nearby stars. We're looking at one star at a time. We look at one star over here, we look at one star over here, and we try to pick them all out. But I started by telling you that there were hundreds of millions and billions of stars. So right now, we're working on a new design where we continuously can scan the entire sky at optical and infrared wavelengths to look for any signals to increase our odds of potentially ever getting a detection. Now, these are just a few ideas and search techniques for SETI. What I have found most astonishing as a scientist is that for one of the most fundamental questions of whether we're alone in the universe, humanity is hardly committed themselves to the search. In truth, there are only a mere two dozen dedicated SETI researchers worldwide. We truly are a rare breed. Now that we know that planets are plentiful and Earth-sized planets are common, this should only encourage our search. We need to wake up and realize that today we have the technology and the prowess 
to do a comprehensive search. This brings me back to that original question to you of what it would mean to each of us and all of us here on Earth if we ever did make contact. I know that we each may draw a different meaning to that discovery, but I know for myself, it would give me hope. Because if there's another civilization out there that has survived their own challenges and are now prospering, perhaps we too here on Earth can prosper. This fresh cosmic perspective is within our grasp. We just need to commit our financial and our intellectual resources to answering one of the most fundamental questions. Thank you.